How's everybody doing today? I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all staying safe. Today we are talking about the Raspberry Pi again. And in case you guys don't know what the Raspberry Pi is, it is this little thing. And we are going to be completing today's video on the Raspberry Pi, but in case you're running Unraid, I've actually done a little bit of research and you can also do this on Unraid. And if you really feel like it, you could also run a Docker container on your computer and do it. Because today we are talking about Pi hole. Now this video seems a little bit controversial for me to be doing because it is about ad blocking and ads are what give me money off YouTube. So you might be like, eh. but hey, I know you guys don't like them. So of course I'm gonna give you the means to block them. And then if you wanna support me on the side, there's always Patreon. But hey, Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi one. It is a pretty weak device. Nowadays, if you're buying a Raspberry Pi, you'll probably be buying the Raspberry Pi three or Raspberry Pi four. The Raspberry Pi four being like an incredible beast that you could probably run Windows on. But hey, this is the one we're doing it on today. What is Pi Hole? Pi Hole is a network wide ad blocking service. Meaning if you've ever wanted to block ads on absolutely everything at home and found that you can't, for example, on phones, you can't do it without root access. And on the Oculus Quest, you can't do it at all. And now with Facebook trying to take over the Oculus Quest and start throwing targeted ads on us inside the Oculus Quest, this might be something you might really want to do because this will block ads on every single device in your house once we set the DNS server to connect through Pi Hole, all your devices will first have to connect through Pi Hole before they go to the internet. Meaning that all the ads will be blocked by Pi Hole and everything will get sent back to you on the device that you are using. Because we are going to be doing this on the network through your router, you guys will need your router's IP address and username and password. So in case you don't have that, go do that right now. There is also a way of doing this without going through your router in case you don't want to do it network wide, meaning you don't want all your devices to be doing ad blocking, where you just set the DNS server manually on your phone, on your computer, or whatever you're using. If you're doing it this way, you won't be able to use this on the Oculus Quest, and you probably won't be able to use it on a few other devices. But hey, without any further ado, let's begin today's video. So first thing you need, Raspberry Pi, Docker, Unraid, anything like that, we have it. If you are using a Raspberry Pi, you will also need a micro SD card. So let me just grab one here, 32 gigs. I think 32 gigs is enough. So I'm gonna grab my 32 gig micro SD card. So first thing you will need is obviously the boot image for Pi Hole. So let's just search for Pi Hole on Google and enter the very first web page. Then click install. And of course, as you can see, you can also install it on Docker right here. You can install it on Ubuntu. You can install it on Debian. You can install it on Docker, Raspbian, pretty much. Th there's a lot of OSs that you can install this on. So to do this, we are first going to need to install an operating system on our Raspberry Pi here. To do this, I am going to use Raspbian. And why am I using Raspbian? That's because I feel like it'll work perfectly well on this thing because it's so old and it might actually be able to use the wireless capabilities. So I am going to download the desktop version of it right here because I want a desktop to work with. I personally like UIs. If you guys are fine with working with working just with the terminal, well then you are perfectly free to go with the light version of Raspbian, which will actually allow you to just run a terminal. There will be no desktop, nothing like that. You just just copy paste the scripts from the PyHole repository on GitHub into the terminal that you are given. But I am going to get a UI because I am a noob with the terminal. So we just wait for this to download. While this is downloading, you might want to start getting a software called Etcher. Nowadays it's called Belena Etcher, but either way they are both the same thing. I will have them down in the description below. And from here, you should be able to flash straight onto your micro SD card. It is a very simple software. And if you've ever done any DR DIY projects from this channel before, you know that we've used Belana Etcher before. So now you want to find the image that you just downloaded and extract it by right clicking and clicking extract here. Because inside of that zip image, there's an IMG file. And that IMG file is what we need because we can't flash a zip image onto a micro SD card. So I'm gonna wait for this IMG to extract and I will be right back to you guys once that is done. For extracting the file, you can use any of your favorite software. I'm using WinRAR, but you could be using 7-Zip or any other software that exists out there. I'm actually not entirely sure whether there is any other software that exists, 
but those two are the most popular ones. Once that is done extracting, you want to go back to a Balena Etcher, click flash from file, find the file that you just extracted, select your micro SD card and click flash. This will ask you for admin rights, give it those admin rights and just wait for the micro SD card to be done flashing. Once this is complete, I will be right back to you guys. Wow, the lighting is ever so changing in this country. Okay, now we have the micro SD card. Let's pop it out and pop it into our Raspberry Pi. Okay, now I am going to plug everything in and hopefully we see something happen on the screen here. Now, once this is all complete, you will not need a screen. You can run this completely headlessly. Just plug it in next to your router, even connect it using ethernet for maximum stability. And there you go. So I am going to plug this in. Oh, hey, oi. <laughs> okay, let's wait for this thing to fire up. This is gonna take a while because this is the Raspberry Pi one, but once it's fired up, I will be right back to you guys. Okay, we're now on the Raspberry Pi desktop, so I'm gonna switch to that right here. And as you can see, I can't really record this screen, but it's basically just doing the welcome tutorial. So the Raspberry Pi desktop, it's pretty simple. I'm actually surprised that the resolution works here, but it's scanning for wireless APs, so I'm gonna let that do its thing. It should scan using this USB drive and it did find my wireless network. So we should actually be able to use that. So connecting to it right here, I need to find a keyboard. Okay, I have found a keyboard. So now what you want to do is you want to open the terminal on your Raspberry Pi and you are going to type sudo space raspi, so R-A-S-P-I dash config. And this shows you a window like this. You scroll down to interfacing options. You see SSH and you enable the SSH server. Now we wait for the SSH server to be enabled. And now it says the SSH server is enabled. So now you can just scroll down to finish, just like that. So now you can close your terminal. So now I have a wireless uplink. So because you are going to need your Raspberry Pi's IP address, you can either find this out through your router or you can put your mouse over the Wi-Fi and that will give you your IP address. So mine is 192.168.3.37. And for all you people getting triggered about me saying my IP address out loud right now, that is a local IP address. So now we switch back into Windows. We don't actually need this anymore. You could just scoot that out of here. You will need some sort of SSH software. I, myself, I'm going to be using MOBA Xterm. So this is the one I am going to be using, but you guys are free to use your favorite one, whether it's Putty or whether it's WinSCP, whichever one you like. I'm going to click on new session and 192.168.2.37 because that is the IP address that we found. The username is Pi and the password will be Raspberry. So we click OK and now it's asking us for the password. So we type Raspberry because that is the default password. And there you go. We are now in the Raspberry Pi without needing to actually be in it. So now, as you can see, we are right here. One step automated install is what we are going to use. All you do is you copy this, you paste it into your terminal right here. So as you can see, that is pasted right there. You just click enter. And because this is an automated install, it will actually just install for you. So as you can see, it is installing right there in the MOBA Xterm window. Everything is automated. I will be right back to you guys and show you exactly how to make this network wide once it is done installing here through SSH. This is the hardest part done guys. So once you're here, you know you've succeeded because you are connected to your Raspberry Pi. You have your OS on there. And if you were doing this through Docker, same thing, find your Docker containers IP address or just follow the lovely tutorial they have on the webpage. I'll be right back to you guys. So as you guys can see right there, it now says this installer will transform your device into a network wide blocker, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter on this. Then it says Pi hole is free, but powered by your donation. So I definitely recommend you guys go donate if you're going to be using this. The Pi hole is a server, so it needs a static IP address to function properly. In the next section, you will choose your current network settings or manually edit them. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do this. Okay, I don't know why I wasn't recording my screen there. I, I forgot. So now you will want to choose an interface. I'm choosing wireless LAN because it is available and because I can and I press space to select it and then I click OK. There we go. And now select upstream DNS provider to use your own select custom. 
Currently, right now, I am actually using a DNS provider called Cloudflare. So that's the one I am going to select. Pi-hole relies on third-party lists in order to block ads. So you can select a list from here and then select uh, and then add more if you want. But personally, this is this is perfectly okay for me. So I'm just going to press enter. Uh, select protocols, uh, block ads over IPv4 and block ads over IPv6. Sounds good with me. Again, this takes a while. If you guys had a Raspberry Pi 4, this thing would be spicy fast. I'm just here like double clicking. Okay. Do you want to use your current network settings as a static IP address? For simplicity's sake, I'm going to say yes. If you guys want to set your own static IP address that you would prefer, then, you know, the more power to you guys, just go ahead and do that. It is possible your router could still try to assign this IP address to a router, which could be a conflict. But in most cases, the router is smart enough not to do that. Uh, if you are worried, you can set it in the router. We're not going to do that because I'm not really worried that that will happen. My DHCP reservation pool will, doesn't do that. So we should be completely cool with that. Selecting stuff in SSH is such a pain. There we go. Uh, do you wish to install web admin interface? Yeah, I'm going to click yes, because that means we can completely control over everything over like Chrome or anything like that. Do you wish to install a web server? I'm just going to go with recommended everything. And I'm just going to start double clicking like a crazy mad lad that I am um, trying to select. OK, yeah, guys, don't worry. This is normal. It's, it's normal to have a painful time to select anything through SSH. Do you want to log? I'm just going to select um, recommended for everything. Select privacy mode. I'm just going to select show everything. Mm. OK, <laughs> it's almost done now. Pretty much almost done. That's the entire setup complete. OK, pretty cool. Now we just wait for this to finish. OK, guys, pretty intense day. Three vids. Four, including this one, and I know I might have overdone it, but I felt like I needed to get all the info out there. I felt like one video was rushed and one was not really relevant anymore, so I had to make one that is just amazing. I hope you guys don't mind too much. One person got triggered in the comment section, and I'm sad that he did, but his preference. So once you guys have installed the script on your Raspberry Pi, we are ready to continue. Because once that script is done running, you will just want to open up Chrome and enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. So for us, that was 192.168.2.37. And by entering this, you will now find that instead of going to no website, you are greeted by this, the Pi-hole interface. And we want to go to the admin panel, just like it's asking us there. So we're going to click that. And as you can see right here, you are on the admin panel of Pi-hole. So I'm going to click login. I don't actually remember my password. So let me change that real fast. The password is displayed to you once Pi-hole finishes installing. But in case you're like me and you close the terminal before Pi-hole finishes downloading, well, then you might want to run this command. Just like that, it should ask you to set up a new password. So I'm going to create one right now. Just like that, new password set. So now I can type that password into here. Boom, we are in the Pi Hole interface. That is how cool this is. You actually get a web UI that you can play around with right here. So as you can see here, you have your whitelist, you have your blacklist. So in the whitelist, you can put sites like YouTube to support your favorite creators. And in the blacklist, of course, you add all the websites that you want swooshed out of your life ads. And of course, there's that entire list of block domains that we had downloaded earlier. So that should actually be here. Now what you want to do is you want to go into your routers interface because we are going to be setting this network wide. If you're not setting this network wide with me, still stay tuned in because you will require this in order to set it up on your phone. So I am going to sign into my router's interface just like that. And as you can see, I am in my router's interface. Then what you want to do is you want to find your network settings where then you will find your DNS server. You want to change it from auto to manual and change the DNS server to Pi hole. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. 2.37. And now when you click apply, all your connections will go through Pi Hole. And there you go. Once your router reboots, all the devices connecting to your network will be going through Pi Hole. But just in case you don't want it to be network wide, in case you don't have an Oculus Quest and you don't really care about blocking ads on every single device in your household, you just want it done on a certain amount of devices, then you can do 
this. Go into your device, find your network settings. On an Android, it's pretty simple. You just press the cog right here. If you're on Android 10, go into edit, uh, advanced options, and under IP settings, change that to static, and it'll ask you to add an IP address. And then you see DNS1 and DNS2. You can make the IP address anything you like, but your default gateway needs to be the IP address of your router. So for me, that's 192.168.2.1. Usually it is, usually you can take the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and just remove the numbers before the last dot and change it to a one. That is usually in all routers. In my one, that is the way I have mine configured. And then for DNS1 and DNS2, you of course set it to your Pi hole IP address. And of course you can set DNS1 to your Pi hole and DNS2 to 1.1.1.1, which is for example, Cloudflare in case your Pi hole goes down. But apart from that, that's it. That is how simple it is to set up network wide ad blocking and be free from those pesky ads. So if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys wanna join the community, we have a Discord down below, and we also have a Reddit down below where I wanna see you guys posting your spicy memes. If you guys wanna support the channel, we have a Patreon down there. I greatly support every single one of you that donate. You help me continue making the content I love for you guys. And yeah, if you guys wanna be notified of future content, I upload tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. So if you want to get a little notification every time that happens, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.